All right, hello everyone. Oh, thank you for being here. Um, very happy and honored to be, to be here uh, to talk about our ongoing journey from REST to GraphQL on Android. As an introduction, I'm Julian Salvi, lead Android engineer at Aircall, a startup based in Paris. I'm also an Android GDE uh, and part of the Paris Android user group. And you can find me on Twitter as well, at Julian Selby. So what we're going to talk about today, uh, I'll give a little introduction and set up the context about why we move from REST to GraphQL. Then I'll explain how uh, we use GraphQL and Apollo Kotlin in our code base. And then a little return, return of experience with our GraphQL migration. And then I'll show the conclusion and the resources. All right, let's have a bit of introduction and context first. So what's GraphQL? GraphQL is an open source query language and a runtime that provides an efficient and flexible approach to data fetching and manipulation. It was developed by Facebook and later on open sourced. So three main points here. First, the efficient data retrieval. Uh, GraphQL optimized the data fetching by allowing clients to specify their extract data requirements, eliminating overfetching and underfetching. It has a single endpoint simplicity so no need like to have multiple routes for your, graph, for your REST API. GraphQL simplified the client-server interaction by using a single endpoint. So it reduced the, the number of round trips and streamlined communication. It has also a strong typing and introspection. GraphQL strong typing system ensure clarity in data uh, introspection capabilities enable powerful tooling and automatic API documentation. So why using GraphQL at Aircall? Why? Uh, because our REST API has some scaling issue. So first we wanted like, to break our REST API into microservices and it, has, it was not modular enough and has some scaling issue. Then we wanted a serverless, serverless alternative, desire to create a serverless alternative from the REST API and moving away from our big REST monolith interface. Then we wanted like some efficiency in the data ag aggregation, so the need for efficient microservice communication and data aggregator point. And a minimum description. Due to the internal usage of our REST API, we pushed, uh, this pushed us to take advantage of GraphQL with minimum disruption to our customer. And so why we choose GraphQL? These are the six key points why we went for GraphQL at Aircall. Efficient data loading, uh, so allow the client uh, to request only the data they need, minimizing overfetching. The data aggregation, client fetch multiple resources in the single request, reducing the number of network round trips. The real-time communication, GraphQL provides a way to establish persistent connection between the client and the server through a WebSocket, and enabling efficient and scalable real-time updates without the need of constant pooling. That's the main advantage regarding REST. They have a federated GraphQL APIs that enable independent development, deployment, and scaling of individual resources, resulting of improving the maintainability and the scalability of our system. GraphQL has a strong typing. Types, uh, GraphQL types uh, ensure communication between clients and servers, and this time we won't have any surprise when receiving the, uh, the response. It will provide reliable data validation. 
and of course it can reduce the latency. GraphQL support like batching multiple requests into a single uh, single one, so it can reduce the network latency and improve the overall performance of our application. So now let's deep dive on how we used GraphQL on our Android app. So the tech under the hood, uh, we are using AWS AppSync because our infrastructure at Aircall relies a lot on AWS. So our GraphQL backend teams went for AppSync and not Apollo. AppSync offers many capabilities like filtering, real time, uh, or scalability, and has a very nice integration with our like, current tech stack like Elasticsearch, DynamoDB, or Cognito. On the Android side, we choose like to go for the Apollo Kotlin library to manipulate the GraphQL API. Why doing so? Uh, Apollo offers many advantages compared to the AppSync library. Uh, it has great interoperability with Kotlin, the Kotlin code base. Apollo is developed 100% with Kotlin. The code generation uh, is made in Kotlin. Apollo is multi-platform. It supports queries, mutation, and subscriptions. It implements a caching system. Has a great support for app sync and default WebSocket implementation. And the community around Apollo is awesome, and the maintainers are very active. And that's a big point here. So, our journey migrating from REST to GraphQL begin like in 2020, end of 2020, when the first introduction of the GraphQL API happened in production. Then, step by step, with the, uh, the break of our big monolith, uh, we make the transition step by step to uh, GraphQL. But it's a long journey, uh, migrating all the routes, not disrupting the clients, and uh, it's an ongoing journey, but we are like on a good track now. And all new development are now uh, using the GraphQL API and no more the old REST API. And hopefully in the couple months we'll be fully using GraphQL. Okay, now let's see how we brought GraphQL to our Android app with Apollo. How we did set up GraphQL Apollo Kotlin inside our Android app. So, about the setup, uh, let's see how straightforward is it like to implement Apollo Kotlin in our Android project. Let's see how to deal with the GraphQL schema, our main source of truth, and see how we can make queries, mutation, uh, subscription that are real GraphQL thing. And let's see how the Apollo client can coexist with our rest retrofit client. So, first, when you start your project, you're gonna need to add your dependencies. So first, you, you're gonna add your Apollo uh, plugin, like here, Apollo 3, uh, the latest stable version. Then add your runtime dependency, Apollo runtime, and then in your uh, Gradle file, you're gonna define the Apollo Lambda with the service and the, the package you want. For example, at our company, it's com.aircall. In order like, to generate the, the model uh, for using the GraphQL SDK. So the GraphQL schema looks like this. Uh, it defines like all the types, the query, the mutation, and so on. It's very long and big file. Uh, that represent the data you can fetch and manipulate. Uh, for the downloading this schema, uh, you can use a Gradle command like to download either a schema.graphql or a schema.json. You can manipulate both with the Apollo Kotlin library. So once the file is downloaded, 
uh, you can like uh, manipulate queries like this. So, for example, he'll, uh, here to get an agent with his business hours. Come on. Uh, the time slots, for example, this the query are meant to get data. The parallel in REST is using like a get request. Mutations, uh, if I made the parallel to uh, the REST API, is there for post request, put, or delete. It will like mutate the data. So here, for example, we want like to put a conversation as read. So uh, we're gonna mutate this conversation with the, uh, like the new input. Like the, we're gonna set it at, as red. And another thing we have with GraphQL is the subscription. So under the hood, it opens a WebSocket. So we have a constant connection between our client and our server. And like that, we can have real-time updates within our application. Here, for example, we have updates when we receive new message coming for the user. And with that, uh, you can take advantage of the autumn completion and the deep link using the GraphQL plugin by Jimkin Mayer in order like, to have a better developer experience inside your application. And for example, here, uh, you can have like the, um, this is the Android project. So you have your uh, big schema with all the, the types defined. And with the plugin, for example, if, you, if I go with the, the query we have here, like the get adjunct working, I can easily like deep link to business hour and see how, how the, like the type is construct and what type is actually business hour. And I, I can also take advantage of the autocompletion. So for example, in slots, I can use days, from, and to, which are like non nullable types. Now let's see about the Apollo client setup. It's very straightforward if you use to like build your retrofit client. So you call your Apollo client builder and set up the server URL, the WebSocket server URL if you have any. And then you can take advantage of using the OKHttp okay client if you are using it for your REST, your REST implementation. You will define like your, uh, your OK client with like interceptors like uh, an HTTP login interceptor or an authenticator, depending on your implementation. And then you're going to build your client and it's good to use. So to query something which has been defined with the schema, you're going to get your Apollo client called dot .query, the query you want. So for example, the agent query I just like defined before. And you're going to call dot .execute to get the data and then manipulate it. Very straightforward. And that's pretty much it. Like you can use now your GraphQL API inside your application with your REST API along. So now uh, I'll give you the learning we had like through this whole migration and uh, we learned quite a few things. So first, Apollo loves Kotlin. Apollo is built 100% with Kotlin, so it has a great support for coroutines and Kotlin flows. The code generated uh, inside the, the module where GraphQL is used from the schema will be all Kotlin class and everything like query and mutation will also uh, be in Kotlin. So, for example, if I go back to Android Studio here, uh, 
we can check like the all the messages are like data classes, uh, like uh, the types. Everything has been generated here. Like when you go to the build uh, build folder, you go to sources Apollo, and then here you have like the entire code that has been generated. Uh, regarding the types, the query, the mutation, and so on, and everything is, got, is in Kotlin. So, I said like, Apollo Kotlin has a great coroutine support. So, when you are using coroutine, you can go to like dot .query your query and call dot .execute, which will be a suspend function. So, you will get your response synchronous way. Uh, so by that, uh, you will be able like, not to use uh, the callback hell and manipulate the data, retrieving the data you want and handling the, uh, the, the errors. You can also use some Kotlin flows. Uh, here, for example, we are using uh, the flows in order like, to handle our uh, events in the subscriptions. So we are listening to the events that are going through this subscription uh, using the dot to flow, and then we can collect all the data that is like listen inside this subscription. And in case of error, we can like catch the exception and manipulate it. So a bit of example. Here, uh, so my query looks like that. Uh, I have my data classes, which has a big definition. You don't have like to implement any parsing solution, uh, Moshi or so on. It's all done itself by the library. You just need to manipulate these classes that has been generated, and it's good to go. No need like to like implement yourself the the model and so on. Everything is handled by the library. Second point, beware the timeout. Beware the timeout because if you are using, you are in the current migration, if you are using your REST API alongside your GraphQL API inside your application, don't use the same timeout for your REST and GraphQL API. Synchronize with your backend team and other client teams in order to identify the best timeout to pass for the GraphQL clients. Because under the hood, the implementation may be a bit different and uh, the, the timeout won't be the same. And if you are using OK HTTP, don't reuse the same clients for your REST and GraphQL API. Use one for each implementation. Take advantage of the lazy loading as well. Lazy loading when only a part of your application or when you are just using uh, your GraphQL application for one feature, for example, under a feature flag, uh, take advantage of the dagger hilt lazy loading. With that, only when you are using the feature, the resource gonna be loaded. So we're gonna defer the loading of the like the Apollo client initialization later on when the resources will be actually useful. So. We can take advantage of that not to like destroy the resources of your application. Another thing which is very important is the monitoring part. In your like development or production environment, always monitor your request. Take advantage of the OKHttp OK interceptor in order to monitor your queries and mutation regarding the time and the resources it takes on your device. You can also use Checker, uh, which is a library uh, in order to monitor HTTP and uh, GraphQL requests. 
And if you want to learn more about Trucker, check out the talk by Nicola Cortis at the last TradeCon Berlin uh, conference. Uh, they released the 4.0 very recently and has a lot of improvement when it comes to monitoring GraphQL queries and mutations. So to set up the, uh, the Trucker implementation inside your Android app, you're gonna define a checker collector with the context uh, if you want to show a non persistent not notification uh, and the retention period for the, the data to be shown in that screen. Then you're gonna define the checker interceptor you're gonna pass to your OKHTTP builder. So we're gonna define uh, with the collector we just defined before. If you want to redact some uh, like sensible uh, headers, like O token, bearer, and so on, you can redact the headers. You can also always uh, read the response body in, in order like to detect error while parsing the data. And so on, you can also create a shortcut inside your, uh, for your application in order to directly access uh, tracker. That's a nice addition in the 4.0. And then you're gonna set up the, the new interceptor in your OKHTTP client. So for that, I will show you a quick demo. Uh, so we are here on Android Studio. You're gonna see my device on the, on the screen. So here we have Trucker that has been listened like through our Android application uh, on staging. So, and you see, we have REST request and also uh, GraphQL request. So here, I can have a look at the response, see the, the header that has been passed, and like have a detail, like overview of what happened and what is the data for your request. You can have like a, a big overview and also have uh, a request overview as well. And you can see like very everything, all requests that has been triggered inside your application. Okay, so another thing which is very important are the nested queries with great powers come great responsibilities. So Nested queries is very useful. It offers many capabilities, uh, and like the nested queries are one of them in GraphQL. This is pretty efficient when we need like to aggregate a lot of data at once. But sometimes the response time might increase a lot. So, as I said before, always monitor, especially when using nested queries. And if you spot like uh, many degradation on the response time, synchronize with your backend teams to find the best solution. That's what we are doing at our call. So for example, let's take for example this query in order like to fetch all the conversation we have in our application uh, with the fear on field. We wanted also like to get the last message we receive for a given conversation. So at first we were using like, okay, we're gonna use a nested queries, we're gonna get the list of message and have a limit of one, like to get the latest message regarding a conversation. But when we like did the implementation at first, uh, like the query was very bad and the response times very long. Like seven, to, like seven to 10 seconds, it's not meant to production. So we take a step back and see with the backend side how they can like do it on their side and how they can improve it. So they did some query optimization inside the resolver and inside the database in order like to query the last message much more faster. They could have used like the same implementation using a, like a nested query. And for example, or we can expose 
the last message as a new field inside the conversation uh, object. And with that, when we like uh, talk to the backend team, we have now an optimized query and it's good for production. Subscription are very cool. I have like real-time communication. Yeah, it's awesome, but subscription aren't really easy. And especially when we have an app sync backend. So subscription are long lasting operation which can maintain an open connection, mainly a web socket, uh, between your client application and the backend. So the data is pushed to the socket and listened on the client side. And thanks to that, we can keep the connection alive, but obviously it's not that easy. And things might get a bit more complicated with AppSync. Spoiler alert, we had to build our own, own AppSync protocol to better handle our refresh token. That was the main issue we had when dealing with the AppSync backend with Apollo. So at first, we needed like to implement a reopen strategy for our wet socket. In case of like a failure, we need like to restart it. So Apollo exposed uh, a method inside their builder called WebSocket reopen when. Uh, there you can like use the throwable that has been thrown by the Apollo SDK and the number of attempts when we want to reopen the connection. So for example, uh, if the throwable is Apollo auth exception, we gonna reopen the we are gonna try to reopen the, the socket, or if the number of attempts if is below three. But how this exception can be triggered? How we can really reopen this uh, like this web socket? So inside our Apollo token authenticator, we gonna uh, check when something has, like, is wrong, so like, for example, a new uh, token must be a refresh and so on, we're going to get the Apollo client, get the subscription network transport, which is attached to our web socket, and close the connection. Actually, the, like, maybe the wording is not the best, because it's closing and reopening the connection. So here we're going to close the collection and throw the Apollo out exception. So with that, we improve a lot our reliability around WebSocket. But while investigating, we still had some disconnection issue with the Apollo and our AppSync subscription. And we saw that there was an open issue on the repository. So we had a look and it was exactly the same problem we had when using subscription. So we spot what was the, the, like the, the main issue is that like when setting the, the WebSocket server URL, we have to pass uh, like an AppSync URL built with the new authenticator or authentication tokens. Uh, with the host and base URL. The thing is like, when using AppSync, every time we get new authentication tokens, this URL has also to be updated uh, in order to make the web socket working. So with that, this method like just set it once and we couldn't like, set new authentication tokens in order like to reset the uh, like the WebSocket server URL, or like the trick was like to like reset the Apollo client, but it was very not efficient at all. So we came up with a solution like using a lambda instead. So once the the connection the server URL need to be changed. This lambda will be called with the new uh, like tokens to be passed to the URL. 
So using a Lambda will help us like resetting the URL without resetting the whole Apollo client. So we thought like it was a good solution. We checked with the Apollo maintainers, but unfortunately no ongoing development was uh, for that feature. So we decided to contribute it our, ourselves because Apollo is an uh, open source library and the maintainer are very kind to like accept you to contribute to the Apollo Kotlin library. So we like we did the work, we implemented our uh, Lambda in order like to fit our needs and uh, after a few reviews it has been merged and then we had like uh, a proper good implementation uh, on our side. Uh, lots of things happened with WebSocket. Then we have the error handling. So error handling is not that easy as well. Uh, it's quite different from the REST API. Error can be exposed in many ways. So in query and mutation, it can be directly accessible in the Ap Apollo response, or an exception can be thrown. Uh, so there are like two or three types of handling the errors using GraphQL. So we need some tricks. Apollo, Ap um, Apollo response exposes a list of potential errors. So we also have like multiple sources of truth for our error and we should handle the error by parsing it multiple times. So here, for example, uh, a simple mutation when we want to send a message. So when we get the response, uh, we have to parse, for example, if the data is null, we're gonna check uh, inside the result errors if there are any, or we're gonna parse the result itself if it's okay to see if there are some errors inside the, the result, or the, um, the mutation can throw an exception, and then here we will be able to parse the exception to parse the error. Quite complicated, so uh, we have different type of parsing, uh, parsing the, like the, the result itself uh, to check if there is any kind of error. Checking the list of errors uh, is quite painful, and then also react on different kind of throwable, if it's from the network, from the cache, and so on. Uh, so that's quite complicated and I have like no good solution for now. Uh, we are still uh, working on how to best parse errors, but with the new version of Apollo, the 4.0, which is ongoing and in alpha right now, uh, they kind of improve how they expose errors. And we are almost on good tracks. So uh, we need like to give it a try. Okay, another thing is like the schema automation. This is very useful because at some point you will need like to automate the GraphQL schema update. Uh, without that, you will spend a lot of time and lots of resources updated your schema yourself. Uh, when the development on the backend side is very active, so you will have like lots of updates on the client side. So you need to automate all the things. When working with multiple flavor as well, uh, this is very recommended like to get to implement schema automation. So let's see how we manage that with our CI. So at our call, we are using GitLab CI. So this is how we did it. Uh, so we have a job, uh, pull GraphQL schema. So with an app sync, AWS app sync command line, uh, we're gonna get the schema uh, with our credential, uh, with the JSON format. And then we're gonna execute the, like with this new schema, we're gonna execute a script to automatically trigger a merge request inside our project. So we're gonna fetch and check out our develop branch and, and then make like the diff between the old file and the new one. Like that, uh, if there are some changes, then we're gonna open a merge request and 
uh, we're gonna analyze it to know if it's good or not. If, it's, if there is no changes, we can uh, uh, like no need to open a merge request. So once the merge request is open, our CI is gonna be processing the, the branch. So if it's all good, we can merge it on uh, the, the new schema will be included in our developed branch. If the CI has failed, we check out the, the branch and try to fix the error. And if we can't, we need like to sync with the backend team and maybe consult the MR and uh, check why the schema has changed and we can't fix it on the client side. So when you have multiple flavors, for example, staging or production uh, or any white labels, you may have like to handle multiple schemas to, to maintain. This will lead obviously to multiple updates and probably it will be a bit more error prone. More maintenance when, we, when you deal with multiple flavors. Just keep that in mind. And then to, to finish the Apollo, any Apollo issue, go with the Apollo community. The community is around Apollo Kotlin and Apollo GraphQL is quite amazing. Uh, as Apollo, Apollo Kotlin is an open source project, maintainers are very active and very helpful when we have any question or kind of issues. You can open an issue on GitHub or directly ask the maintainer on the Kotlin Slack. Uh, they have a dedicated channel for Apollo. Uh, and like they are truly amazing and they answer very quickly. But um, quite amazing for, for this kind of uh, open source project because it's, it's a huge one. So they are now working on an Apollo V4 uh, version. And tech, uh, tech, tech. Apollo V4 is still an alpha version, but it will come with great improvements. Uh, so for example, we will have an Android Studio IntelliJ plugin, like better than the plugin I'd show you before, and like built especially for Apollo Kotlin. A better handle, error handling with exceptions, and many, many things, uh, like this is the V2, better navigation within the plugin, and a support for Kotlin multi-platform lovers, support of the Kator engine uh, when using like uh, your WebSocket. And this is something we're gonna look at very closely. Okay, so to conclude, and uh, I'll share some resources as well, the main key takeaways to think about uh, GraphQL. So why it was a, the right move to go with GraphQL? First, Apollo Kotlin uh, is definitely a very good library and it helps a lot. Uh, less boiler plates and so on. Easy integration inside your projects. Has a great support with Coroutine and uh, Kotlin Flow. We have a strong typing and contract with the API. No more surprise when using some uh, REST API. Combined queries are very good, but you need to, mm, to be careful of it. And obviously the Apollo community and Apollo maintainers. But there are still something like some areas to watch. Like the uh, always collaborate and speak with your backend team in order like to build the best uh, and the best GraphQL API for your uh, business. The error handling for sure, uh, something that needs to be improved. Subscription and always reliable, uh, but uh, WebSocket is very tricky. And the Apollo app sync support, uh, so. It needs like some, like maybe tiny uh, improvement on that. So for the resources, uh, you can check the graphql.org uh, general documentation, uh, the Apollo Kotlin documentation and its repository. Uh, also, you can check the videos from the Apollo GraphQL Summit. 
And if you are interested in or using AWS, uh, you can use AppSync and his hard uh, resources. So thank you very much, and I hope you enjoyed the talk. And uh, I'll be around if you have any questions. Thank you. <laughs>